Hi, welcome to the EM4T facility of 3D printing here in Karlsruhe. We are standing in front of our SLM Realizer SLM 125. It's a selective laser melting machine. We are printing now actually uh, a fluid uh, guiding or distributor system. Um, it's starting since uh, yesterday at 11 o'clock and will be finished today in the evening. Um, you can see here in the build space uh, behind this lid um, there is the powder bed. Maybe we can have now a closer look at it. You see the wiper going up and down all the time bringing fresh powder. In between you see the laser melting up all the hatch lines and the contour lines for it. Um, uh, this system is also equipped with an um, uh, uh, internal powder cycle. This means uh, we have like a, um, a vacuum cleaning system inside. We have here two gloves so we have no contact directly with the powder and then we remove the powder uh, getting it sieved and putting it uh, again into the machine. This was now the basic principle of the machine. Um, now what are we doing here? Here we are printing different structures, uh, metal pieces we need for our um, research work. We are getting it, we have, for example, I'm a PhD student, I'm doing distillation units, additive manufactured distillation units, compact units. Um, we can have afterwards a look on it. Um, or we get in print jobs from colleagues not working directly on additive manufacturing but you coming with challenges for us saying we need a part for this or that and then we are looking if it's possible to print it here uh, and then we print it. So we are more or less one of the um, fabrication units here and we are using additive manufacturing for parts too complicated to manufacture in the classic way or doing like rapid prototyping so we can increase the production times with uh, additive manufacturing by um, using especially high complex parts we can print overnight um, so we can increase our research output by using additive manufacturing because we are using like we can for example I'm printing over a weekend four parts in the week I'm testing it uh, after one week I have the results so I can start in the weekend with the new print job so we have a really fast uh, manufacturing cycle so we can really edit the geometry and not uh, just the process parameters so we can stick for geometry and maybe go also for simulation based uh, uh, designs. So now look at some parts we printed recently. For example I have here one of our bigger parts, it's a, a, a fluid distributor for a reactor system. It's making of from four channels 256 small channels. So we have um, like a fractal structure directly going to the micro channels so this is also one of the pieces you can show the new design freedom it's just the metal you need it's a wall thickness of two millimeters and you can see as low metal consumption as needed um, we have also printed like honey cup structures um, this is an example for thin walled parts. So we have a lot of small channels inside it. It was just a test piece. It's not uh, using a uh, real advantage of additive manufacturing because it's straight channels. But you can see it's possible to print really thin walls. Uh, with thin walls you can also do like something more fancy like this fluid guiding elements we designed for heat exchangers as you can see it's nearly impossible to manufacture it without additive manufacturing it's distributing a, uh, 
in a tube it's distributing the flow always from the wall to the uh, inner and out so it's like a static mixer and it's completely optimized for additive manufacturing it's coming like this on the build plate you have to remove the powder and then just uh, put it uh, take it like this from the building plate and it's ready for use so no complicated uh, machining afterwards is, you can use it as as printed and now for example we have here a bit more complicated and a completely printed a 3D printed distillation unit uh, we manufactured here um, you can see everything is included the internal structures printed here you have the inlets outlets channels and uh, the connections um, as you can see it's always uh, optimized for 3D printing because you see we have there are no so support structures above here you have on the building plate you just remove it from the building plate and you have to mill the threads and then you are finished so um, this is one of the things you have always to have in mind optimize your part for 3d printing don't try to um, print parts made for milling redesign it and then you have the real advantage of 3d printing So now we are at our second printer and your, our newest printer. It's a Digital Metal P2500. Um, uh, binder Jetter. It's, um, it's one of the newest systems we have here. And we use it as a second option to the uh, selective laser machine because uh, with binder jetting you have different restrictions from selective laser melting because you um, in selective laser melting you have always the issue you're directly melting the powder so you have on overhangs you have problems you can't print for example a 90 degree angle um, this is possible with binder jetting what's binder jetting? binder jetting is one of the oldest 3D printing methods um, we, you have a powder bed as you have it on the selective laser machine. You have also a powder applicator who is give, bringing the new powder on every layer. And you have a print head. And what you're doing here is now in comparison to the selective laser melting machine, you're not melting it, you're just binding it with the ink. Where you see it here, it's the blue ink. And you are um, gluing the powder together so you have a green body afterwards you have to cure it um, depowder it and putting it in a sinter furnace and then you have your final part so you're removing the thermal step you have in the selective laser machine directly to the sinter oven so you have here no issues on the thermal side so you have no problems with internal stresses no problems more or less with um, overhangs so we have now two possibilities to print uh, parts and every, every ma um, machine has its sweet spot so we can decide on every new part which machine we have to use or we can use for example um, uh, binder chatting has a sweet spot in the size of a golf ball parts with also internal channels, but the depowdering is complicated. Um, what's more easy at the selective laser machine, but there you have always trouble on the thicker parts and so on. So here you can go also for a bit thicker parts and uh, print them. So, and also one idea is here to print porous parts, uh, complex porous parts by not sintering it completely just um, sintering to uh, some extent one thing we choose like for example this printer is, it's also with a really high resolution you can see it here it's a massive uh, uh, stone so it's everything is also designed 
for high accuracy um, as we wanted because we are printing microstructured systems. So uh, resolution is one of our main goals by printing it. Yeah. Now I'm standing in front of the depowdering cabinet. Uh, after printing at the, um, the binder chatter, you have a build box full of powder and, uh, and you cure it so the ink is going um, to be hard. And afterwards you have to remove before sintering all the powder. Um, and this is done here in this closed cabinet um, so you are not exposed to powder. Um, and we use compressed air to remove the powder from the parts and after this step it's going for the sintering. So now maybe we can have a look close inside when I'm depowdering some of the parts. So we have now um, one of the parts you have seen before from the selective laser machine, this flow distributor for the reactor. It's still more or less uh, in the powder. So we're using now compressed air to remove uh, slowly all the powder from it. So now we have also always think about the internal channels and getting rid of the powder there. So we have to go through every channel um, and make sure that all the powder is removed because in sintering all loose powder will be metal, uh, dense metal, so um, you can't use it as you want. So always make it sure. Um, yeah. And so this is also one important step at um, binder jetting, um, depowdering it especially if you have internal channels um, because it can be a bit time consuming but um, it's always uh, a question between the advantage and disadvantages of the um, of the system so depowdering is a bit easier in uh, the um, selective laser melting process um, but you have always the overhang issue and, and the thermal issue. So choose wisely. So after this step, if all the powder is removed, um, we put it on a, in the sintering oven and afterwards it's, uh, it's finished and we have our final part. And look if it's working or not and then we can try maybe a second time or if we are lucky it's um, working in the first round. So now look at some parts we printed with this printer and I can show you some uh, advantages of the printer or, uh, or the technology and maybe also I show you some uh, hidden uh, things or faults of the system. So for example we have here really a small part, quite complex um, if you look at it. Um, it was printed also in one step and sintered and it's worked quite good. We tried this also on the selective laser machine and there it was more complicated because of the overhangs and so on. So and the quite massive metal. So this is really a good part. Um, also thin walled structures are possible with the binder jetter. So for example this part it's also a wall thickness of around 200 to 300 microns. Um, for example also we printed like a key. Um, there went something wrong at the sintering stage so it bended a bit but I think if it's a problem you can solve um, with a better support in the sintering process um, but it's showing you also the, the cycle you print something and then you learn from it um, here we have also a micro heat exchanger also printed 
in one step here the difficulty is to get rid of the powder in the internal channels um, but the outer surface and so on is quite good and now we have here part it's more or less the same I have shown you before the distillation unit and now if you compare the designs this, uh, this design was I showed you before was optimized for um, selective laser melting and now we have a design um, a bit more optimized for binder jetting you see we have not this oh, um, inclining surface we have just a flat top so you see we can print and center this um, structure and it's working fine but as I mentioned there was also a problem in the depowdering step I lost one of the connections because the wall thickness was too low so it's always uh, you have to choose right which printer you use and you are in the best situation if you can use from different printers and using them or techni technologies and using this one which you, um, is the best so uh, 3D printing it's not one machine uh, and one printer it's a whole um, first, uh, line of tools you can choose from and always use the right tool if you can Uh, what attracted me in this field, I think it was one thing for sure was it's a new technology, it's a new field, you can uh, do some first steps on it. Um, also I think the, the creativity you can um, explore by using 3D printing, you can really think about things uh, and then print it and get it. Uh, I think this is one of the attractive things in this field. I like it most. Designing in it at the computer and getting it, it's always like if you do, did it the first time, it's like, yeah, you're really happy to see what you thought about now in a final part. Um, I think it's not so difficult. You have to learn uh, um, the CAD system and you have to learn the design rules and restrictions of additive manufacturing and the, bo the best thing to learn is, is doing it hands-on um, using the machines um, getting parts printed and also getting parts printed who are not working then you can see what was went wrong what did I make design wrong um, and then so it's getting a, a closed loop always you're learning by printing um, using some software tools you're always learning and if you're happy by always learning you will learn quite fast also in this field so don't be afraid use it and then I think you will get the best experience if you printed something